Hey guys, it's Lindy. And it's Mike here, and this is TIY. The Tiny Eat Yourself channel, and today we're gonna talk about how to squeeze a large bathtub into a tiny house. Yeah, we're gonna look at five ways this can be done, and hopefully you haven't seen them all. We found some interesting new ones we hadn't seen. This is also a new series that we're starting on our channel, so if you like this style, please let us know down below. All right, let's start with number one. Okay, so we're gonna start our journey in Barcelona at the micro apartment of an architect named Valentina Maini. So this is the only one we're gonna look at that actually isn't a tiny house technically or on wheels, but it's still a small space, so it is relevant to tiny houses. And this solution is putting the bathtub underneath inside a bench, in this case, underneath a dining room table as well. It's basically just a bathtub with a sliding cover over it that you can sit on, and this would definitely work in a tiny house on wheels with the proper layout. Mm -hmm. And then she took Japanese legless chairs and used them on the bench as a backrest. All right, and for each one of these, we're gonna look at things to consider if you were to actually build this. So what would one be? Uh, getting naked and bathing in your dining area, which, I don't know, depending on who you are, could be a plus or a minus. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a tiny house, just hashtag tiny house life, par for the course. Then you also have to get your plumbing in there. You have to run the pipes over into a possibly weird spot. Mm -hmm. You also have to work on your flooring materials and make sure that you're sealing everything properly because any area that gets a lot of water use really needs to have extra attention. Obviously, it doesn't have to be right where you're eating either. It can be underneath some type of chill out bench or even a couch situation. Yep. So now we're going to move on to number two. This bathtub was built under a pop-up bed, also known as a Murphy bed. And this was done by Trekker Trailers, a tiny house builder out of Florida. Sadly, we didn't have any real footage of this, but we can at least speculate. So let's look at some things to consider. Since the bed does sit on top of it, it does have the potential to trap moisture. And your bed is the last place that you would want any mold or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So either you would have to let it air dry or you'd have to wipe it out before you go to bed or you could just fall asleep in the tub. Yeah, that's that's the real message here. <laughs> there's also the weight issue. As you know, with tiny houses on wheels, there's a huge weight limitation issue mm -hmm. depending on the house. And these larger tubs can be up to 100 gallons, over 100 gallons even, but that would be about 800 pounds, which is something you definitely need to consider. Okay, on to number three, which is the Japanese soap tub, which is a little bit more common but we want to talk about some interesting executions of this style. The classic soak tub is a wooden spa-like one, but from this Relax Shack's tour of a house made by Tiny House Chattanooga, they did a stainless steel one, which was about 30 inches wide. So normal American tubs are about 60 inches by 32 inches, so this is about half of that. Now onto one done by Peter Matheson. He did his out of a recycled freezer, which is so cool. Yeah, Living Big did a tour of this, and he mentions that he got it out of a landfill, which is not everybody's style, but, you know, it's super eco. Yeah, and DIY. This guy basically needs to be in the fetal position to use the tub. I don't think I could do that. I mean, I'm about six foot one, and I feel like I'd be like, leg cramp, and be like, <laughs> I'm stuck. Now, if you're into more of like a round style, you could do like a wash basin style. Or you can do the classic bottom of a barrel kind of situation that you've seen a lot, I'm sure. We actually saw a woman who did this at the Tiny Fest Midwest, and she was having issues with hers leaking or whatever. She really wanted it mainly for aesthetics, so it ended up becoming more of a shower. Yeah, more of like a shower statement piece. Cool looking though. Now for an unusual one, number four, in setting your bathtub down into the floor. This tiny house is called Nomad's Nest and it is done by Wind River Tiny Homes. Yeah, so this one's definitely my favorite, both for functionality and aesthetic. When I first saw the picture of this, I thought that's that's definitely gotta be a stationary tiny home because yeah. it goes so deep in there. But no, it's actually a gooseneck trailer. And the thing I really like about this is it's almost like a wet bath situation and they just have the cover for the bath and then they that way they have the whole bathtub situation and you might only be using that twice a year and it could really compromise your shower experience so you can have a bigger footprint of your total shower and then have that bathtub that's pretty small pretty cool mm -hmm. now for some things to consider such as ground clearance yeah since we insulated down into our trailer on our tiny house we could it would just be hitting the ground basically so it would not work for us you'd have to definitely go higher depending on how they did it you might have to build up and then you could lose headroom or maybe they just built down so that they still maintain their headroom for their shower and had a bath and you would also need to insulate out around that tub otherwise you're going to get a lot of heat loss through it and so that mm -hmm. would be even more room down below it 
Yeah, nobody wants a cold tub. This last one is an option if you don't want to lose a lot of space in your main living footprint. It's a full-size tub over the tongue or the hitch side of your trailer. If you spend any reasonable amount of time browsing tiny house stuff on YouTube, you've probably seen the Monocle House. This is in that one. It's also by Wind River Tiny Homes. So let's look at some things to consider here. You lose tongue box room, which is where people put the utilities for their tiny house, such as what we're going to do with putting our solar and our mini split in there, but you can always switch it up. But I will say it's probably less of a weight issue in this situation because it's right there on the tongue on the hitch, which can mm -hmm. usually handle quite a bit of weight. And you better be bathing a lot, though, because that's a pretty amazing view to give up through that nice big monocle window. <laughs> One last point about these bathtubs and things that you have to consider is that you might need to be hooked into a continuous water supply or you have to have the holding water tank capacity to fill these bathtubs depending on how often you do take a bath. Okay, so let us know down below in the comments if you like this new style of video that we're trying out and if there are any other topics that you would like us to make lists on of cool examples of stuff in tiny houses. Yeah, like kitchen countertops or bed designs. Or roof styles or anything, mm -hmm. anything you want. And also feel free to follow us on Instagram at tinyityourself. Yeah, and if you haven't already, like and subscribe. And we really appreciate everyone that's done so thus far. So we'll see you in our next video. All right, thanks, bye. bye. can always switch it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>